This project is from Chaz and Alex featuring Art Sandberg. Uh, we'll be discussing a little bit about combined heat and power as well as tri-generation. Art, thanks for being with us. Uh, I guess to get started, let's, let's talk a little bit about your background. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, well, um, I have a master's degree in meteorology and um, worked in private consulting, private sector consulting for about 30, 32 years or so, uh, primarily providing um, licensing and siting and other consulting services, primarily to the energy industry. Um, I moved over to the uh, North Carolina Clean Energy Technology Center, which is at NC State University in 2014. And um, uh, ever since I've been there, I've been the assistant director of the uh, USDOE program called the Combined Heat and Power Technical Assistance Partnership, which is a um, which is a program, a national program intended to provide education and technical assistance to facilities that are um, interested in the benefits of combined heat and power. Could you uh, could you explain to us a little bit about what is what exactly is combined heat and power? Sure. So combined heat and power is the simultaneous generation of electric and thermal energy from the same fuel. And um, it, it is, so typically at the same industrial facility, you have a, a grid, grid provided electricity, and then you have like an on-site boiler or other thermal, other source for generating thermal energy. The combined um, efficiency of that decentralized process is about 35 percent. But uh, with combined heat and power, what you're doing is generating both the electric and thermal energy at, uh, at the site. It's usually at the site where, the, where that demand is. And the combined efficiency is uh, about um, 75 to 85 percent typically. Okay, and um, Pretty much what's happening there is you are generating electricity from waste heat that would typically and otherwise be exhausted to the atmosphere. So it's, it's an efficient way of generating um, heat and uh, heat or thermal uh, energy and electricity. What is uh, tri generation and what are the advantages of tri generation over a uh, convectional refrigerator? Right. So you know, historically, you know, CHP has been around for a long time and, you know, pretty much, you know, you, you generate, um, uh, generate, say, electricity mm -hmm. and then you have a, a exhaust, a high temperature exhaust, uh, and that would normally get exhausted to the atmosphere and then you just generate um, uh, steam from that for process purposes. But actually, um, at uh, a CHP system can be configured to not only provide the, um, the electricity, but the heat from the exhaust can be, can be coupled with, a, with something like an absorption chiller that can then um, uh, cause the, um, the exhaust to, um, through, uh, through a process where you're basically uh, uh, um, uh, evaporating that, uh, evaporating the water, and uh, at a very low temperature, at a very low pressure, I should say, and by evaporating at a very low pressure, the the temperature of the water drops, and uh, can drop as low as forty degrees, and then the the water that's the uh, the chilled water that's created by the uh, by by that evaporation can then be used to uh, to run through pipes for for chilling purposes, uh, let's say of a building or, or something, you know, something where there's a, uh, um, a cooling demand, mm -hmm. like say air conditioning. And the advantages of where this really provides a benefit to a CHP system is, and you take for example, a, 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 um, a campus like TTU, typically you have a, a, um, a high thermal load during cooler periods when there's a high heating demand at the facility. So if you want to put a CHP system in, you can size it to a large thermal demand based on the, um, based on the winter load. The problem is 
during the summer, the heating load drops off, and the, which means that you're gonna be running the CHP system at a lower load because you don't wanna waste the thermal energy. Well, if you incorporate an absorption chiller onto that CHP system, what it'll do is um, a, a kind of normal, it'll equalize the, 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 the load um, uh, on an annual basis. So you'll be able to run that CHP system at a higher, higher capacity factor throughout the year. Part of the year, you may only be you know, running it to heat, to provide heat to a building, to, to, to buildings. But uh, during, say, the hotter times of the year, when the heating load drops, you could still run that CHP system at a high capacity factor, but instead, through, through an absorption chiller, chill, you basically uh, take that um, steam and, uh, and chill it to, to run through the buildings, and it keeps the efficiency of the system high overall. Effective electric efficiency calculations allow for direct comparison of CHP to conventional power generation system performance. Effective electric efficiency can be calculated using the equation below, where WE is a net useful power output, sum of QTH is a sum of net useful thermal outputs, Q fuel is a total fuel input, and alpha equals the efficiency of the conventional technology. Typically alpha values are around 0.75 to 0.83. It comes down to economics. One of the things that uh, affects the economics the most is, is uh, how much it's going to be used. And if, you, and if your geography is such that you're going to use, if your chilling demand is during a large time of the year, period of the year, then that will help it pay for itself. And you'll see most likely, you know, if you did a, a, a uh, you know, a review of where all these tri-generation facilities are. They're mostly in the warmer climate. So geography definitely um, impacts the viability, the economic viability of installing these type of systems.